Welcome to the third Sunday after Pentecost worship service in our beautiful park. Plan to be here for the worship service in the park on June 23rd with Spark Marshall. Invite family and friends to the special service. Plan to stay after the service to enjoy a light lunch in the park that will be available for a donation. Services in the park, unfortunately, cannot be live broadcast at this time. The video recording of both the sanctuary and park worship service is usually available on YouTube for replay by 5 p.m. <clears throat> Among the things coming up this week are the Bible study on Wednesday at 2 p.m. in the office with Pastor. Village Volleyball and Gaga Ball are Wednesday at 2.30. Note the information about Campfire Light Vacation Bible Camp, formerly known as EDS. It will be in the park July 15 through 19, 6 to 8.30. Pass this information on to families you know to join in the fun week. Melissa Benfield is the coordinator. Her contact information is in the bulletin to register. Volunteers are needed to help with the program, so please contact Melissa to volunteer. We have half sheets available in the back of a list of the summer events coming up in the park. Please pick up some copies to give to friends and family. We want all the community to be invited to enjoy the beautiful park and the events we have. If you signed up for prayer partners, John Leeser has posted the list on the bulletin board at the lower level of the church, so you can find your prayer partner for the year. Are there any other announcements to be noted? John Bass passed away yesterday. Um, the Bush. 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 Okay, Bush. He, he passed away. Um, the service is going to be on uh, Thursday, the 13th at 5 o'clock at the church. Then we will begin our service, and I invite you to stand as you are able for the responsive reading of the call to worship and invocation in your bulletins. The kingdom of God is like a excuse me, is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed on earth. It grows up and becomes the greatest of shrubs, and the birds of the air make nests in its shade. Give thanks to God, whose promised rain is coming. Thanks be to God. God, you are the gardener of all creation. You planted this world with the seeds of your love. We'll sing the hymn, The Beauty of the Earth, which is in your bulletin. Thank you. 
We affirm our faith by joining in the responsive reading of the Statement of Faith printed in your bulletin. We believe in you, O God, Eternal Spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the way of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteousness, you led through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sin and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your own. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. We'll continue with the children's message. The children are incited to sit in the front bench for a message from Joanne, and afterwards go to Sunday school at the picnic tables with John. All right. How about if we come over on this side? I can't get this mic to work better for me. There we go. We might have to work that way. Okay. Well, this is as close as I can get. <laughs> okay, so I have something in this bag here. Do you do you know what this is? What do we call this? Money. Okay. So I'm going to have is it is it grandmother grandma <laughs> okay i'm going to have i'm going to give both of you some different types of money and i want you to just look at it a little bit right all this money will buy um, buy things but all of that different kind of money looks different each one is money but it's they all look very different there's different colors there's different pictures and there's different words on them and you get to look at those but all of that money including the dollar bill there has something that is exactly the same on them Every single one has something the same. I think, can you find it on there too? I think, I think grandmother has the right idea. How about on the dollar bill? Do you see where it is on there? Same thing on the other side? Okay. Yes, we got it. They all have the same words, in God we trust. If you look real closely at all of those coins, even though it's very tiny, you'll find it says, 
thing God we trust. If we had a hundred dollar bill, it would say that. If we have a thousand dollar bill, it would say, in God we trust. Now, um, can you, just to look, can you look at your coin, one of your coins, and see if you can find those words on there. You found it on the dollar bill. Can you find it on there? There are different places. You have to look. It's tiny. The same words, in God we trust. If you were go, if you were to go to another country and look at their money, it would not say that. This is the only country that those words are on every bit, every kind of money that we have in the United States. Those same words are on every coin, every dollar bill. So, what do we mean when we say "in God we trust"? What do we mean when we say "trust"? We trust somebody or we trust something. That's kind of a hard word to have an idea. But a good way to think of it is we trust our parents our, to pay, take care of us. Trust means that we can count on that person. We know that that person's going to be there for us, to help us. We can count on our grandparents and we have friends and teachers and family and, and folks in the church here. We trust each other that we can we know that, that that support is going to be, that help is going to be there no matter what. And so the Bible talks about trust. The Bible says in Psalm 20, some trust in chariots and horses. Now those are words we maybe don't use so much today, but back 3,000 years ago, kings and armies would use powerful horses and chariots. But the Bible verse goes on to remind us that, but we, don't just we don't trust just in chariots and in, in trust in chariots and horses. We trust in the Lord our God. It's good for us to all remember that no matter how strong we are or how much money we have, it is only God that we can entirely trust. No matter what happens in our life, we can be sure that God is with us. So I'm going to give you uh, the quarter, maybe grandmother, I think. The rest of the money, I'll take, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can keep the quarter. Okay. And um, I just have an idea. I know it's not a lot of money, but maybe I just suggest that you could take that money and maybe, if it's okay with the grown-ups and friends, check with them if they know the answer to the question, what is something that's the same on every U.S., United States coin, or money, what's the same thing on there? And what is that? In God we trust is on everything. And it might be that even some grown-ups don't realize that. So you can show it. You can look at other coins. Maybe take some time after church and look at different coins and you'll find somewhere on there those words. And if it's okay with your parents, you could take your quarter that you have from here and put it somewhere that you might see it every day. Maybe next to your bed or sometimes look at it wherever it might be convenient and find those words. And you can be reminded even just by looking at that that you can trust in God, that God is always there for us. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for our country and that many years ago the leaders in our nation knew that we should not trust in money, but in you. Help us this week to remember that no matter what happens in our lives, we can always trust in you. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 20. The Lord answer to you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with great favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout with joy over your victory. And in the name of God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses. 
but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. We will continue with the gathering of our offerings. God has provided us with all that we need. It is our privilege to give back to God. Let us return a portion of what God has so freely given to us. Let us now humbly bring our gifts to the Lord. blessing on all of our offerings. Bless us, O God, the gifts that we bring this day, that they may be a sign of our commitment to your kingdom and a pledge of our love for you and your world. To multiply the work done by our time, treasures, and talents, that your presence and compassion may be known in all the earth. Amen. Please be seated. The Gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, but he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain of the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, 
With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sowed upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Christian doctrine holds that God's kingdom is both yes and not yet. Yes in the sense that with his ministry, Jesus announces the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. Through Jesus Christ, God's kingdom has already come. Not yet in the sense that the fullness of God's kingdom has not yet been realized. The inbreaking first announced by Jesus continues. And the fullness is ever emergent. Jesus begins the parable of the mustard seed with a question. With what can we compare the kingdom of God? What parable will we use for it? Jesus is letting those who are hearing that he is about to share a metaphor for God's kingdom. It is like Jesus does not say the kingdom of God is XYZ. What Jesus does say is the kingdom of God is like. Jesus uses something that would be commonplace and well known in an agricultural society to make a simple comparison to help his listeners understand. Here Jesus uses a mustard seed, which is a very small seed. From a very small beginning, the mustard seed grows into a large 10 foot high bush. From very small to quite big, big enough for birds to nest in, big enough to provide shade. We therefore are to understand that the kingdom of God is like something that starts very small, but has the capacity to grow into a very big thing. When we look around the world today, we might think, where is the evidence that this kingdom of God exists. It has been 2,000 years since the inbreaking of God's kingdom in Jesus Christ. So where is it? Maybe it is so small, still so small, that we need a very powerful microscope to find what Jesus says is like a mustard seed. The approach I will take today is to look at ourselves and one way we activate the seed of faith within, within us. This approach affirms that the kingdom of God is within you. This approach also affirms that we can, we can practice Jesus' way of love in our lives. The kingdom of God is within you. The well-known author Leo Tolstoy wrote a book with this title that had a profound impact on Mahatma Gandhi. Building on Jesus' <coughs> mustard seed metaphor the kingdom of God is within us, beginning very small, nurtured and attended to 
This can grow inside us, transforming who we are, how we act. At some point, this seed of faith pours out of us in love toward others. The kingdom of God within each of us becomes an outpouring of love and united with others also awaken and transform the lives of others. When this happens, the kingdom of God is like a seed of faith within you that matures into a large outpouring of love. We might not perceive it within our lives now, within ourselves now. But when we see a large outpouring of love coming from others, we can, they can mentor us to do the same. The seed of faith, the kingdom of God, is already within us. However, a mustard seed kept in a glass jar will not grow. It needs to be placed in the right conditions. Let me give you an example. The food truck most likely began as a small seed of faith. An idea in one person or maybe a few people together. Making sure that hungry people in our community have access to food became a passion. These persons, these people, did the work that needs to be done to make this vision a reality. This seed was nurtured and attended to. It germinated and grew and now outpours in love every month. Hungry people are given the food they need to feed themselves and their families. That, however, is only the outward sign that we can see. Within each of these people who make the food truck happen each month, the kingdom of God grows and they are transformed. Who they are as people and who they are as followers of Jesus Christ is transformed. The kingdom of God is like a very small thing that matures into something very big. The kingdom of God within each of the food truck team grows from a small seed of faith into a large outpouring of love. The kingdom of God inbreaks within their heart, and it inbreaks within our hearts. Or it starts as a small seed manifests as a large sharing of love, a community ministry that not only helps feed our community, it can literally change people's lives. It is my hope that the work to nurture healthy relationship among youth will also move from small seed of faith into large outpouring of love, care and kindness, transforming our faith and changing lives. First, we need to awaken to God's presence. The seed of faith, the kingdom of God is within us. We need to awaken to God's presence. The kingdom of God is within us. And as we become aware of and awaken to God's presence, something starts to germinate. Otherwise, the seed of faith remains in a glass jar. We need to practice waiting for God. Henry Nowen writes in his booklet, A Spirituality of Waiting, 
that most people consider waiting a waste of time. Perhaps this is because the culture in which we live is basically saying, get going, do something, show you are able to make a difference. Don't just sit there and wait. Waiting, however, is not passive. It is active. The secret of waiting is the faith that the seed has been planted, that something has begun. Active waiting means to be present fully in the moment. In the conviction that something is happening where you are, and that you want to be present to it. A waiting person is someone who is present to the moment, who believes that this moment is the moment. To wait open-endedly is an enormously radical attitude toward life. So is the truth that something will happen to us that is far beyond our imaginations. So too is giving up control over the future and letting God define our life, trusting that God molds us according to God's love and not according to our fear. The spiritual life is a life in which we wait, actively present to the moment, trusting that new things that are far beyond our imagination will happen. We wait on God in prayer. Now we might say, I just don't have time for this. Actually, we are too busy not to wait on God. Yes, this waiting slows us down, but it also focuses us on what is really important. We can make prayer part of our everyday lives. Brother Lawrence, a spiritual writer and monk from about seven centuries ago, washed dishes for the community where he lived. His prayer life embraced dishwashing. And it was from those kinds of dishwashing that he wrote his spiritual masterpieces, probably drawing his hands first. <laughs> when I go to the YMCA to walk the track, I am very slow. Most of the other walkers lap me over and again. And I need to take rest breaks. I never imagined I would need to take just a couple years ago. Now, of course, last year, I needed a walker. Rather than comparing myself to the other walkers or how I was able to walk two years ago, I need to acknowledge that I'm making slow but steady progress. The kingdom of God is like a slow walker. When we slow walk with God, we walk humbly with the Lord our God. We wait, we pray, we awaken to God's presence. When we do this, the seed of faith within us is activated. It begins to germinate. Once activated, the process of growing from seedling to large bush takes time. We need to know that once activated into an awareness of God's presence, the kingdom of God within us will grow. It does not matter how long it takes, it will grow. The process has been activated. The fullness of the large bush will come. The kingdom of God is within us, both yes and not yet. Jesus said,
said, Come to me, all ye who are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is pure light. Let us join together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand as we are ready. separate any one of us from God's love for us through Jesus Christ. We ask, dear God, dear, that you might be with us as a congregation as we pray outside today, as we pray outside twice a month through the summer. We ask that you might remind us in these outdoor worship services to celebrate the beauty of your earth, 
the wonderfulness of your awesome creation. We pray that our times together might be blessed. In prayer this morning, you hold all of those in our congregation who during this season will gather with friends and families. We ask that their travel times and their times together might be blessed. We ask that within us, the kingdom of God, that is within us as a seed of faith, might germinate and grow. And that together, an outpouring of love might happen in this community and in the larger community. These prayers, the prayers of our hearts, we lift up to you, dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will come, thy will come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread and our bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in the discipleship pledge. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbors as ourselves. We love one another as Jesus loves us. We make disciples by teaching and modeling how to follow Jesus' way of love. Please stand as you are able. May God grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans according to God's good will. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The old rugged.